I want to bring in Nancy Tietro. Uh, she is Leslie Van Houten's attorney, and she joins me live on the program tonight. Nancy, thank you so much for being my guest. I so appreciate it. You know, this might come as a shock to a lot of people who maybe don't follow the case because it has been going on for 52 years. But what are the actual chances, do you think, that Gavin Newsom might take this to the Supreme Court? Um, and then after that, that the Supreme Court might actually favor your client. Well, I think that we will prevail in the Supreme Court if it gets to that point. The first of all, Leslie was not commuted from a death sentence to to life with the possibility of parole. The voters in California overturned the death penalty shortly after she was sentenced. After that, she had a second trial. The jury hung. She was tried alone without the other two, without Manson and Patricia Krenwinkel. The jury hung. There was a third trial, and she was found guilty. The court imposed, the, the, the death penalty wasn't one of the uh, penalties that could be selected at that time. The, the judge gave her concurrent sentences of life with the possibility of parole. And uh, it, it, she had to serve a seven year minimum service term on that sentence. So she actually, when she was sentenced, she had eight years worth of pre-sentence custody credits. She was eligible for parole the day she was sentenced. She has, you are correct, she's been before the parole board 22 times. And the last five times, the board has found her suitable for parole. What that means in California, in order to qualify for parole, the board has to find that you no longer pose an unreasonable risk of danger to public safety. And that is not an easy finding to get from the parole board. Um, the parole board considers the record. The parole board considers the numerous psych evaluations that are very rigorous. The court looks at remorse, looks at responsibility for the crime, looks at rehabilitation, looks at parole plans. She won't just be released. She will be on parole for a number of years. She'll go into a transitional living situation for a year. Parole has conditions. So it really boils down to who she is today. She's not Charles Manson. She certainly, as a teenager, fell under his influence. She admits it. She takes responsibility for it. She has expressed deep remorse, deep regret for what she has done. And she has undergone years, decades of rehabilitative programming, therapy. She's advanced herself educationally. She really is not the same person that she was as a teenager back 53 years ago. Can I and ask you, Nancy, do you believe that if her murders, um, which are undeniable. Uh, if her murders weren't Manson murders, would she still be in prison today? Manson murders, meaning Manson was the one who committed the murders? Is that your question? He was part of the conspiracy. She was part of his family of followers. Right. What do you mean by Manson murders? She committed the murders, certainly while she was part of the Manson family. But right. if your question, so the question is, I have Manson, is that clearly the brand of this crime was Helter Skelter, Summer of Terror. I mean, all of right. the things that go along with being connected to Charles Manson and heading to the LaBianca's house that night and getting the direction from Charles Manson, who scouted, tied them up and then ordered them to kill. All of those things are Charles Manson murders in the eyes of most people. Is it political, do you think, that she's still behind bars because it was a Manson murder as opposed to a murder that most people might not know oh. of? I understand your question. I would agree with that. Now, if, if the question were if Charles Manson were the one um, being looked at for parole, he is very he was very different than Leslie Van Houten. He was not rehabilitated. He did not take responsibility for anything. He did not pass his psych exams. Very different. Your question, your second or the, the other part of your question, is this political? Well, I, I, I think it is. I, the, the, the board, as I said, has found Leslie suitable for parole five times. The governor has reversed it all five times. The recent court of appeal decision uh, relates to the fourth reversal. And we, we do have a petition for habeas corpus pending on the fifth reversal. And is it political? Well, you have to look at the history. 
Back in 1988, the voters in California uh, passed a proposition that allowed the governor authority to reverse a murder conviction. Um, that's the only place where he can reverse the parole board's decision. Um, and the reason the legislative intent behind that or the voters intent was so that the governor could put a stop to basically letting murderers out, even though they might uh, meet the parole board standards. So that was his mandate back in 1988. Since then, the California Supreme Court has put conditions on the governor's ability to reverse a grant of parole based on constitutional due process. There has to be evidence in the record, a modicum of evidence. So it's a very, very generous standard for the governor. But there has to be a modicum of evidence in the record showing that, in this case, Ms. Van Houten currently poses an unreasonable risk of danger to public safety. Her sentence is like with the possibility of parole. It is not a death sentence. It is not- Which is why my question with... was, do you think she's been denied this many times because it's a Manson murder as opposed to just a murder that was terrible? Well, I, well, I think that is another part to it, sure. That exacerbates it. I, I agree with you. I think that is true. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.